ไปไปสวัสดีครับคุณผู้ชมครับผมคือแจ็คสันจากเดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริกแอนด์เดอะแคทริ
came in and he gave me the, the phosphorus. Yeah, it's my favorite <laughs> chemical. <laughs> all of a sudden, this physical brawler turns out also to be a super smart chemist nerd. And to be clear, she doesn't become that. She doesn't learn to be that. She already is that. Because again, women by nature can do and be everything. And what exactly is the issue with this? Well, it's a fact that because at first she is this one specific thing, but then also turns out to be this entirely other thing, suddenly we don't really know who she is anymore. To build on this example, look at Kristen Stewart's angel. The way the movie tries to establish her is that she's this confident, street-savvy hustler of the team who uses her wits to gain an advantage over others. But it's fine. I nabbed his ID card from the gym this morning. But the issue here is that the movie also presents her as just as competent of a physical brawler as the tall angel, which not only makes her witty hustler personality kind of pointless, it also destroys her individuality. It's hard to know who Kristen Stewart is as a person when she can do and be the exact same as the person right next to her. And if we don't know who she is, it's hard to get into or develop her as a character when we're not even sure what it is we're getting into or developing. The only distinguishable difference between these two seems to be that Kristen Stewart says whatever funny haha -ha stuff she has on her mind. Is there food? I'm starving. I grew up with major abandonment issues. I got food poisoning from undercooked lamb and yogurt sauce that I left out, but then I got hungry. We sling some bills. We get violent. I feel like a tiger today. Maybe a leopard. He describes Sabina for me. Like, what did you put into her? What kind of character is she? Um, Sabina's like. I can be really annoying. Then we have Princess Jasmine's angel, who is this super smart technology nerd thrust into this world she doesn't belong in. And she could be a pretty interesting character, if not for the fact that the movie already presented the tall angel as a super smart nerd as well. And the fact that Jasmine seems to be able to handle herself physically too. To rock a rhyme that's right on time, it's tricky, it's busy. That's it. Please move. So then, what makes her different? Who is she compared to the others? Who is she as an individual person? And pretty much with every female character, the movie is so unhealthily obsessed with this agenda of female empowerment that it just ends up being a weakness. The characters don't struggle, they don't have any flaws or depth, they don't have anything that would make them individual people that the audience can care about and watch grow. Because in a world where everyone is special, nobody is special. When women by nature can do and be everything, the one thing they can't do is be unique. In addition to empowering the group of people they're about, the other thing these movies with social agendas often do is villainize the demographic opposite them and show how they need to struggle to overcome obstacles set by this opposite demographic. And since Charlie's Angels is about women, obviously here the point is to showcase men and the evil they're capable of. Which again, is made very clear. You're sitting here eating my food, enjoying my view. Look, Elena. You're much too smart to keep pushing this forward, aren't you? You have yourself a good day. And, and don't don't forget to smile, yeah? I know Krav Maga. What do you learn? Shopping mall. Shopping mall. Basically, pretty much all male characters in Charlie's Angels are in some way douchebags who treat women in a derogatory sense. I think there's a grand total of maybe three good guy men in this whole movie. And one of them dies, another is cleansed of his whatever sins by a woman's beauty, and the last is like the perfect man straight from a dystopian world where women have enslaved men. I prepared a mini feast to honor our beautiful friend. I would love to apply a firm touch to your back. Do you consent? If you ever need to talk, I'm also a licensed psychotherapist. Wow. So all in all, the message clearly is that men can be a bit of an annoying obstacle to women. And again, there's nothing wrong with that message. There's probably a lot of truth to it and it has a bunch of powerful material to explore. That's great. But the problem, just like before, is that this movie is so blindly obsessed with its agenda of having men be evil that it inadvertently destroys the very message it's trying to explore. Firstly, just like happened on the female side, all male people in this movie are dialogue down to unrealistic caricatures nobody can take seriously. This security guard, for example. Just trying to get to work, Ralph. Well, I had to do my job too. Okay. New look, huh? Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. 
Aren't you holding people up, Ralph? The security guard unfairly singling out Jasmine could be a pretty powerful instance of men abusing power against women. But the reason this moment doesn't work whatsoever is because we've never even seen the security guard before, and so therefore we have no perception of why he would do this. He's not being evil because he's jealous of Jasmine's career. He's not being evil because he's hurt inside that Jasmine didn't go out with him or whatever. He's being evil just because he's a man. All men in this movie are being evil just because they're men. And that's all there is to it. No reasons, no explanations, no explored internal fears or flaws or motivations or anything under the surface. And that's not how real life people function. That's not how to get anything done with your message other than it being scoffed off as shallow and dumb. Secondly, this men are evil obsession also creates a big narrative problem in the sense that the plot of the movie quickly becomes very one-dimensional and easy to predict. For example, near the midpoint there's this very big twist that Elizabeth Banks, who is the leader of the Angels, might actually be evil. She might actually have some evil plan that involves doing something evil to Patrick Stewart's good guy character. But then you instantly remember that, wait a minute, this movie has just spent its entire runtime proposing that men are all evil just because they're men. Which here would then mean that... You too- Hey! Game. I'm not the mole. Satisfying when a plan comes together. Surprise, surprise, turns out Banks is actually good and Patrick Stewart is actually evil. Surprise, surprise, turns out that the good guy male boss is actually evil too. The problem is, it's just not much of a real surprise to anyone, because the film from the very start has done everything in its power to condition the audience to believe that women are all good and men are all evil. So yeah, so much for that plot. Having a message criticizing men or whatever demographic group can be great and powerful, but you can't let yourself be so blindly obsessed with it that you you don't even bother delving deeper into it. You can't have women be good just because women are good and men be bad just because men are bad. That's not realistic, that's not how the world works, that's not a message that will get anyone to listen. And above all, it's not good writing. Another danger that can very easily come true in movies with social agendas is that the message they're pushing becomes completely one-sided, to the point of alienating a certain section of the audience. And with Charlie's Angels, whether the filmmakers intended it or not, the fact is that the movie altogether as a whole is very anti-male. We already discussed all male characters being portrayed as shallow evildoers, but there's also a fundamental underlying connotation in this movie that men as people are objectively sinful creatures who deserve deserve bad things to happen to them. Doesn't matter who they are or what they have or haven't done. If something bad happens to them, it's okay because they deserve it. For example, there's a long running joke where the angels continuously injure a bunch of guys and then make these funny quips about whether or not they're gonna ever wake up. I compressed his carotid and deoxygenated his brainstem. Hey, don't worry, he's gonna wake up. <laughs> Unless he doesn't. Do you think Ralph's gonna be okay? Oh, yeah, I'm um, sure he's fine. He seemed fine, right? Yeah. Hey, he's gonna wake up. Come on. Should we toss him? Yeah, let's do it. And before I make myself seem like too much of a cuck, there's nothing inherently wrong with this. When you're making a movie, you are allowed to portray any group of people or entities in whatever positive or negative light you want. Except China, of course, because China pays the bills. And because there's really nothing negative to say about China anyway. So if you choose to make a very on-the-nose movie where a specific gender as a whole is portrayed as a direct spawn of the devil, that's fine. But what you also need to understand is that there's gonna be financial consequences from that specific audience demographic. See, before Charlie's Angels even hit theaters, it was pretty clear that it was gonna be a financial flop. And knowing this, director Elizabeth Banks came out to publicly say that if and when the movie fails, it's because men don't support female action movies. And whether or not the statement has truth in it, that's irrelevant here. The important part of the statement is the implication of Elizabeth Banks not seeming to understand the concept of biting the hand that feeds. Look, I don't think the anti-male in Charlie's Angels is a big deal. I think it's fine. But at the same time, I understand
understand why male audiences didn't go out of their way to pay money to see their own demographic be continuously pummeled and criticized. Obviously, there's always a place for deprecative comedy, but if you for example make a whole movie ridiculing Scientology in a very on-the-nose way, you can't just expect Scientologists to swarm in to support it. That's not how that works. Whatever message your movie has, you have to be smart about how you deliver it. Don't just say women great, men bad. Find a way to imply what it is you want to say through metaphors and proxies. Probably the strongest female character of 2019 was Felicity Jones in Amazon's The Aeronauts. That film covered the exact same topic of how it's difficult for a woman to live in a man's world and yet it handled the topic in such a fantastic, intelligent, impartial way that literally everyone can go and enjoy that film. And that's what you always want, right? For everyone to be able to enjoy your film, regardless of gender or race or whatever. In a nutshell, I'm not being critical of Charlie's Angels because I hate female-led movies. I'm being critical of Charlie's Angels because superficial agenda movies like Charlie's Angels are the reason why we still have so relatively few female-led movies. And I'd like to think that by now we're way past one-dimensional for social message stuff like this. It's time to stop thinking of it as female-led movies and instead start thinking of it as movies with female leads. Because there is a difference.